Section 1. You will hear a man telephone a travel company to book a holiday. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Good afternoon. Italia Breaks. My name's Margaret. How can I help you? Hi. I'd like to book a short break in Italy. Hotel and flights combined. Anywhere in particular? Yes. Venice, if possible. The holiday destination is Venice. So... Venice has been written in the space. Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good afternoon. Italia Breaks. My name's Margaret. How can I help you? Hi. I'd like to book a short break in Italy. Hotel and flights combined. Anywhere in particular? Yes, Venice, if possible. We've been looking at some of your brochures, and I want to check if you have any special deals. Right. Let's have a look and see what we've got. Right. Mm. OK. I've got the screen up. Can you just give me a few personal details? Sure. First, can I just take your name, please, and a contact telephone number? Certainly. It's John Framlington. That's F-R-A-M-L-I-N-G-T-O-N. And I'll give you my mobile number. I can't always remember it. Yes, here it is. It's 07987 44192. That's it. And how many people is it for? Just two adults. OK. Any particular price range? It's our first wedding anniversary and we... Congratulations! Thank you. So we wanted somewhere nice, but not too expensive. We would like to make it something to remember. Maybe in the medium price range. OK. How many nights do you plan to stay? Five nights only. That gives us plenty of time to do sightseeing and to relax. Right. That's five nights only. And what type of hotel? We initially thought of going for a five-star, but that might be too expensive. So we've been looking at four-star hotels. We've got quite a few in our brochure, but the one I would recommend is the Hotel Scotland. It's four-star, and I know there are rooms available because I have just made a booking for another client there. I didn't notice that one. I don't know how I didn't see it. It's easy to miss them. I've also stayed there myself, as we sometimes have to go and check out the hotels. And of all the ones I visited, this was my favourite. Oh, right. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. What's the hotel like? It has a courtyard for breakfast. It's got 50 rooms. It's just been renovated, and so it's very stylish. Is it in the brochure? It's on page 63. Ah, yes. I can see it's right next to the railway station. Hmm. But what appeals to me most of all is that the hotel's very convenient for all the water buses. And the idea of having a terrace with the room I really find very appealing. These are big pluses. 
It's probably the most central hotel we have. You might think it would be a bit noisy as it's in the main commuter area and a place where tourists go. But from experience, I can assure you the hotel is very quiet. Most of the rooms are facing away from the main thoroughfare. Can you tell me when you'd like to leave? The 17th of March. Coming back on the 22nd. OK. I'll just check again if there are places available. Two adults sharing. Hotel Scotland. Yes, that's gone through. OK. And how much is the break, including flights? There's a special rate at the moment because it's off-season. For five nights, let's see, it's £716 for a double room and flights. That includes airport taxes, but not insurance. Each? No, for two adults sharing. That doesn't sound too bad at all. What reductions do you have at the moment? Well, if you make the booking before the 17th of February, you get a further 15% reduction, subject to availability. That's a big saving. Yes, it makes the price very reasonable indeed. Do you need travel insurance? Yes, I suppose we better had. For seven-day cover for both of you, it's £17.88. OK. Do you want to book today? I think we should, but can I just check with my wife? Can you hold the booking for me? I can hold it until 1pm. OK, that's fine. I'll get back to you immediately. I'll just give you a reference for the reservation. OK. It's F-A-P-S-J-M-1-5. Thanks. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and definitely before 1pm. This is too good an offer to miss. That is the end of section 1. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Part 2 You will hear part of an introductory talk on nutrition. First, look at questions 11 to 14. Listen carefully. Good afternoon. Many people in the Western world eat the wrong food, and they eat far too much of it. So, the topic of my lecture today is healthy eating. I'll divide my talk into three parts. Firstly, I'm going to define what I mean by healthy eating. After that, I'll go on to talk about why people don't eat properly, and then I'll finish my lecture with some ideas for improving the situation. Right. So, what do I mean by healthy eating? Well, some people might think it means eating a lot of meat. Um, of course, vegetarians wouldn't agree with this. They think eating meat is very unhealthy. Other people think that eating a lot of cabbage is good for you, or a lot of salad. Well, naturally, cabbage, salad and meat can all be part of healthy eating. But for me, healthy eating means two things. One is eating a balanced diet, and the other is eating the right amount of food. In my opinion, a balanced diet means eating a variety of foods, including meat, vegetables, fruit, cereals and dairy foods. Obviously, the amount of food we should eat is more difficult to decide. It depends a lot on how active we are.
Before the broadcast continues, look at questions 15 to 20. You will now listen to the second part of the talk. Now on to my next point. Why do so many people eat badly? Well, let's look first at having a balanced diet. To have a balanced diet, you have to plan your meals in advance and then buy the right food and then take time to cook it properly. But these days, people are so busy working that they don't have time to go shopping. So they end up buying fast food at the last minute. Another reason people don't eat well nowadays is that it's actually cheaper to buy food already prepared in a packet. So people who haven't got much money will buy packet food rather than cook something fresh. And a final reason why people don't eat healthily is that they don't know how to. In my opinion, schools don't do nearly enough to educate their pupils in healthy eating habits. And now to my third and last point. What can we do to solve the problem? Well, I think it can be solved by three main groups. Families, schools and the government. To start with, parents should make sure their children have a healthy diet. Secondly, a lot of schools have self-service machines where their pupils can buy soft drinks, crisps, sweets and chocolates. I think schools should change what they sell in these machines. Another thing schools can do is make sure that the food they serve in their canteens is fresh and well-balanced. And to finish, I'll briefly mention two of the measures I think the government should take to encourage healthy eating. One is to limit advertising unhealthy food and the other is to spend more money on educating the public about the benefits of a healthy diet. In my next lecture, I'll go into more detail about the... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear a female student inquiring about changing her course. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi, my name is Rosanna McLaren. Um, I'm a bit early, but I have an appointment to see the assistant registrar, Andy Matthews, at 10 a.m. Hi, I'm Andy Matthews. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. My tutor advised me to come to see you about changing my course. Yes. I've had an email from your tutor, David Vine. Let me just call it up. Here we are. It says, Tutee Rosanna McLaren is on the Wednesday part-time course and wants to change to the distance learning programme. Have you any problems with the course itself? Oh, no. I love it. 
I think the course is really worthwhile. The theoretical sessions once a week on Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. are really good. You have two two hour sessions then? Yes, that's it. And I have to say, I think the practical session from 4 through to 9 in the fashion workshops are also good fun. But I am finding it all very tiring, and it makes me too exhausted for my work on Thursdays and Fridays. You work the other four days of the week? Yes, and some Saturdays. I see. So, what do you want to do? I'd like to change to the program with the distance learning component instead of the Wednesday sessions. Yes, that is a possibility. I see from your tutor, Dr. Vine, that he has no problem with this, but you realize it's possible you'll have a different tutor. Yes, I'm aware of that. It's a shame because he's a very good tutor. What do I need to do now? First, we just need you to fill in this transfer form and the claim form for the reduction in fees. Oh, I didn't realize it was cheaper. Oh, yes, it's a thousand pounds less a year. It gets even better. Can I start the distance learning program from now? I don't see why not. I just need to get a signature from your tutor, which should take only a short time. I'll email it to him now, and then he can sign it and put it in the internal mail. Okay. But I also need to go through with you what is involved in the distance learning program to make sure you are clear about everything. Well, I understand I attend the weekend course once a month and that I can book a bench in the fashion workshop at any other time. You have a computer at home for the distance learning? Oh, yes. I have the necessary equipment for making video calls over the internet already. It's the flexibility of the distance learning over the internet that is very useful. And what makes it even more interesting is that I don't have to spend a lot of time traveling to and from the university on the Wednesday. I can adapt it to my own routine, as I will be able to do the theory over the internet from home when I want. The same is true of booking a tutorial online using Skype. Yes, it is amazing, isn't it? It's in its infancy, but it's been up and running for a year now, and it's going rather well. Can I just ask if it's possible to have a face to face tutorial at any time as well? There is no reason why you shouldn't be able to. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 26 to 30. What about the assessment for the distance learning? I take it that it's the same as for the other program? Let me see. Each month you are expected to keep a written course diary and to present a seminar paper, and at the very end of the course, there will be a written exam which will account for 30% of the total marks. What about the coursework? How much does it account for? The design portfolio, which you need to present at the end, accounts for 50%. I would point out just one thing, and that is that on the distance learning program, some tutors like to see the design portfolio twice each term to make sure you're on the right track. But of course, you can take it in at any time to show your tutor. And as part of the assessment for the portfolio, you have to present at least one fashion item. At a fashion show at the end of the course. Is there anything else? No, that's it. Thank you for all your help. No problem. Hope it all works out well for you now. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a lecture given by a coach. First, you have some time to look at. Today, I'm going to give all the new members of our league a brief introduction about our basketball league. We are a competitive league whose goal is to promote sportsmanship and good health. Founded in 1988 with four teams and 30 players, today we have grown to over 20 teams and 200 players. We will accept any player, regardless of race or sex, as long as they are a student at this school. There is no maximum age. As long as you are still fit, you can play. But we do require all players meet the minimum age standard, which is 20 for woman and 18 for man. We expect the best behavior out of all the players, whether male or female. Hopefully, you will all enjoy the upcoming season and make new friends with your teammates and coaches. Our final date of registration is October 11th. If you have any friends or family that are still interested, don't forget to remind them to register by this date. After October 1, there is a late registration fee of $20 on top of the $200 membership fee. The membership fee includes a team uniform, gym usage fees, and referee fees. All the coaches in our league are volunteers, so please be respectful and don't yell at them if they don't know everything. Please attend your first team meeting on October 15. This will be an important event to get to know your teammates and coaches. The first practice is scheduled for October 18. Please call ahead if you know you can't make it. Our league schedule is as follows There will be practice every Tuesday and Thursday, and games every Saturday morning. This is gym time that is included in your membership fees. Your coaches and the rest of the team can arrange any extra practice times. Practices are from 7 pm to 9 pm, and games are from 9 am to 11 am. Please plan on making all your practices and games. We realize that all the players are also mothers and fathers, students and workers, yet at the same time, it takes commitment to create a good basketball team. There are some rules that everyone in the league must abide by. First, please be on time to your games. If your team is more than 10 minutes late, you will be forced to forfeit the game. Second, please wear appropriate basketball shoes for all practices and games, as shoes other than these may damage the gym floor. Third, be respectful to the referees. Any inappropriate actions or gestures will result in an ejection and a fine from the league. Last, the most important thing is to have a good time. If you are not enjoying yourself, then you are missing the point of basketball. See you all at the games next Saturday. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.